I'm gonna start today with a summary. I love this iPad, especially its size. Now let's get into this. What's up? Dana Machine Garcia here, and today we're talking about the iPad Mini 6. On the one hand, I held back from buying the Mini 6 because I thought it was going to be too small and not pro enough. On the other hand, I also thought I could benefit from something bigger than my phone and was able to handle the apps I wanted to use, but I didn't want to sacrifice portability, like I would with a laptop or a bigger iPad. I eventually took a leap of faith with the iPad mini and now I'm so happy that I did. And I think there are two types of people in this world, those who want to merge their laptop and their iPad and those that like to keep them separate. First off, what was important for me is the portability. I personally don't like doing computer stuff on an iPad. I prefer to use a laptop if I'm going to use a keyboard, but I still want to have an iPad that is portable and easy to use. The iPad mini does that for me. I have owned a 12.9 inch iPad in the past and that thing was awesome but I really couldn't use it in a different way than I would use a laptop. It's heavy and big. I couldn't type on it or hold it for a long time, but I can easily hold the mini for long periods of time. It's not so big that timing becomes an issue. It has an excellent screen for watching videos or for reading. I like following fitness exercises on the iPad as the phone screen was just too small. Yes, I know a TV would be better, but we sold ours as we almost never use it. I also like to have the iPad in the kitchen when I'm cooking to follow a recipe or to watch videos. The second reason to buy this iPad is the ability to use it as a professional device. The things that I prefer to do on the iPad over the laptop are editing photos on Lightroom and Photoshop. Also creating thumbnails on Canva, writing scripts and storyboarding is very easy, especially with the Apple Pencil. And so far I've not experienced any issues with this whatsoever, despite this not being an official pro device. It's just the perfect size to hold to type and to play games. And by the way, even the heaviest games play flawlessly with this chip. Also, when watching YouTube videos, it's very easy to tap that like button, which if you do, would be greatly appreciated. One thing about note taking that I do want to mention is that I personally type everything. I don't use the pencil to write a whole lot, but if you do, you might experience the feeling of not having enough space to write. But even that is personal preference. And for me, that's just not an issue at all. It is perfect for watching a movie on the couch together as the screen is very beautiful and contrasty. All this while it fits in my handbag. What I don't like about it is the options for memory. You can only choose between 64GB and 256GB. And I think they did that so that the gap between the 256GB and the more expensive iPad Air would be too small to not just pay a bit extra for the iPad Air. Because no one is going to pay the price of an iPad Air for an iPad mini. But 64GB is just not enough for a lot of people. People. This way, all those people will be pushed towards the air. Now let's go over the most important features that the Mini has and what it doesn't have. It has the A15 Bionic chip, the same as the iPhone 13. Despite this not being an M1 chip, this thing is powerful. So far it has been able to handle anything I throw at it easily. And this chip future proofs this iPad for at least 5, some say even 10 years. Definitely far longer than you're probably going to be using it. It doesn't have ProMotion, so the refresh rate is 60 frames per second. If you aren't used to ProMotion, then you're not going to notice anything. And even if you do, the screen is still very beautiful and everything works fast and snappy thanks to that A15 chip. It has center stage, so when FaceTiming, the camera crops in on the subject and follows it around, which is nice. It has a USB-C port and not lighting which is a big step up for fast charging and connectivity. It has a single 12 megapixel camera and a flash on the back and a 12 megapixel camera on the front. It has touch ID and not face ID, which was getting used to. In conclusion, this thing is perfect for my needs and I think it's the best iPad for those who want to use it as an iPad. So what do you guys think? Do you agree with me or are you like, nah? Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.